gave, the generosity of this church overwhelms us, and we really appreciate it. The cards were so uplifting, uh, we can't really express enough how we feel about that, so thank you. Speaking of cards, I'm going to invite you to fill out those yellow cards that are in front of you. Uh, again, we track our attendance with those, and also uh, gives us an opportunity to keep track of our prayer requests. We're not having a formal time of sharing this morning, so I uh, invite you to write those down so that we might know what they are. We use them for our Wednesday evening prayer meetings that meet every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Um, it's not a Bible study, it is a prayer meeting. So if you'd like to come to that, we'd appreciate your, your presence. Um, ben Smith passed away on the 26th, and we're having his funeral service tomorrow. The viewing will be at from 11.30 to 1, and then the service will be at 1.00. We'll not be having youth this evening. We will meet again next Sunday at 6 uh, at the Zion House. We have a couple of uh, sign-up sheets in the back. First is asking for counters uh, for 2023. There are some names on there. We, those of you who are on the counting teams for 2022, your name is on the list. Uh, please make a check mark or, or indicate somehow on the list that you would like to continue, or if you don't like to continue, just scratch through your name. But, but there are some open slots. If you have not served as a counter in the past but would like to, we invite you to sign that sheet in the back. We also have a sign-up sheet for anyone who would like to uh, lead Dawning Grace. That's our contemporary service that we have at 9 o'clock. If you are interested in that, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. There's also a, a sign-up sheet for acolytes, for those who would like to serve the Lord in that capacity during the traditional service, uh, see that sign-up sheet. Finally, on the, on the back uh, table also, there are the upper room devotionals and January's newsletter. So if you haven't picked one of those up, please do so. Ministry Council will meet on Tuesday, January 3rd, 7 p.m. The adult choir will practice on Wednesday, January 4th at 6.45 the men of Zion will be meeting on Sunday, January 8th at 8 a.m. Pastor Parish Relations Committee will meet on Thursday, January 12th at 11 a.m. 11 a.m., just be aware of that. United Methodist Women of Faith will be meeting on Tuesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. Finally, the Worship Committee will then meet on Thursday, January 19th at 7 p.m. Are there any other announcements that need to be mentioned this morning? Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the opening voluntary. Thank you, Elaine. Before we begin, I just want to let our uh, Proclaim operator know that there will not be any special music, so you can just skip over that. Would you stand as we join together in the call to worship? The words are printed on the screen before you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will thrill and rejoice. The gateway will open unto righteousness and will proclaim Let us worship God together. Our hymn is number 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Words are also on the screen before you.
merciful God of deliverance, we praise you for sending Jesus as light for the nations. He is the glory and radiance of your compassion and care. Our eyes behold the brightness of your promised righteousness. You illumine our darkness with the hope of your justice. As generations before us, we stand in awe of your splendor. We bow down to worship you, lifting our voices in praise of, our, of your goodness and giving heed to your instruction. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 72. We'll be reading verses 1 through 7 and then 10 through 14. The words are on the screen before you. I invite you to join me responsively as it's printed there. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. Our act of praise is number 219. What child is this? The words are also on the screen. Let us sing together. You may remain seated. Our scripture lesson for this morning is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew, the second chapter, beginning with verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? 
We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After, he'd, after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. When they opened their treasures and presented him with glyphs of gold and of incense and of myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Now, in our early service, this question didn't go over very well. We're only like four of us. There's more of us here, so it might work better. How many of you have taken down your Christmas tree and packed up all the decorations until next, next December? How many of you are still living with your Christmas trees and lights and garlands? So, how many of you taken them down? Oh my goodness. Hardly any. Juan and I have taken them down. Yeah. So the rest of you, I can assume, are still living with the Christmas tree and the lights. Wonderful. Great. The world doesn't see it like that. If we had more people from the world, I mean the unbelieving world here, they might be asking, why are you still dealing with Christmas? Today's New Year's. Get on with it already. Perhaps it's because Epiphany doesn't get all that much press in our country. Epiphany actually happens on January 6th, but we're observing it today. That makes this year a little bit different, Christmas happening on Sunday and New Year's happening on Sunday. But generally, and the unbelieving world would agree with me, generally we're back at work. Kids are generally back at school. Even though Epiphany commemorates the day the wise men finally reached Mary and Joseph and offered their extravagant gifts to the baby Jesus, uh, we find it slightly, slightly out of sync of our normal lives. The Dollar General, Juan and I were there Saturday. The Dollar General already has Valentine's candy on the shelves. Wanda showed me a meme on Facebook yesterday that actually said, Happy Easter. <laughs> Life has moved on. Not so in Latin America, or at least the parts I grew up in. Indeed, I can remember as a second grader in Puerto Rico that kids would come to school after Three Kings Day, that day we call Epiphany, and ask, what did you get? And of course, I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. We got presents at birthdays, uh, Christmas, once in a while. We'd get a present at Easter if you counted an Easter basket a present. What did you get for Three Kings Day? I didn't even know what that was, let alone get any presents. Yet if you think about it, the wise men were the ones who brought the first presents and they were given to Jesus. Maybe, just maybe, we've jumped the gun a little bit here in America. We've already opened up, used up, eaten up, even broken up all our presents by now. 
We've crated up our nativity sets. Eh, not so in this room, but most people. Crated up their nativity sets. Even the wise men uh, have been, you know, we've got them back there, but most of us, well. Yet there might be something about epiphany to which we ought to pay attention. Indeed, when the wise men finally reached their destination, what was the first thing they did? The first sentence of verse 11 from our scripture lesson leads like this. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they worshiped him. In another translation, it says, and they knelt down and paid him homage. That word homage is kind of, a, is, is kind of foreign to us, isn't it? Well, it actually means that the wise men fell on their faces before the baby to worship and adore him. And that word adore actually comes from a Latin word meaning reverence and honor. In the Greek, it literally means to prostrate oneself, to lay on your face before the object of your adoration. Did you know that? I didn't until I actually started studying for this sermon. I found out that adoration actually means to go as far as we can in worship and praise. It makes me think that when I say that I adore cheesecake, or that I adore my little brother, or even that I adore Wanda, I might be going a little too far. We're not talking about cheese confections or younger siblings, are we? The wise men, upon entering the house, paid homage to Jesus. They literally fell on their faces and went as far as they could in worship and praise of God. Does that sound odd to you? Well, maybe we've become too familiar with the story to notice, but consider the following. These were rich, respected wise men. They were on speaking terms with the king. As astronomers, they were privy to the secrets of the stars, and the stars held the secrets to the universe. They were not even Jews. In the, this East meets West moment, this Eastern cult and tradition of the Magi were far removed from any prediction of a Messiah coming out of Hebrew tradition. And when they came into the presence of this little baby, what did they do? They threw themselves down on the ground in abject humility without hesitation. Do we do that? Muslims are called to prayer five times a day. For the devout, prayer time is spent not only on their knees, but also in flat out prostration, arms and forehead on the floor, or at least on their prayer rugs. The mark of the pious praying Muslim can be seen on the forehead. It is called, and I'm going to butcher this word and I apologize, it's called a zebiba, Z-E-B-I-B-A-H, a prayer bump, a worn, calloused, raisin-like mark where head has met hard surface five times a day, every day, year in, year out. For the pious Muslim, a little, uh, excuse me, a life of continually praising Allah leaves its mark on the body. While I don't advocate conversion here in any way whatsoever, <clears throat> I must again ask the question, do we do that in our worship of Jesus, the Savior of the universe and all that is in it? The truth is, adoration is hard for us. We don't like to feel like we're not the one in charge. We like to be pack leaders. Remember Caesar Milan? He used to have a neat uh, show on television called The Dog Whisperer. Hugely popular and successful, not only because he genuinely gave good advice on dog training and obedience, but also because he encouraged all dog owners to take charge, to be the top dog, 
to become the pack leader. I know he's fallen out of favor lately, but that was a good, good you know, advice for raising dogs. What happens if your dog doesn't think you're in charge? And you put him on a leash and you walk down the road. He drags you along, doesn't he? Barking at everything. Maybe you like that. I never did. <laughs> we like to be the pack leader. As Americans, adoration is just not part of our DNA. Yet the older I get and the more I study the scriptures, the more I realize that discipleship, adoration if you will, has nothing to do with me being leader of the pack. Adoration instead has everything to do with completely giving myself to God in Jesus Christ. In other words, my life should be a continual act of falling on my face before God and saying, I am yours. Everything I have, everything I am, everything I do is yours. You, O oh Lord, are leader of the pack. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. My friends, I'm becoming increasingly aware of how loaded that statement is. To say that Jesus is Lord is to say that I'm not the one calling the shots. A couple of parishes ago, there was a, a woman from Great Britain who understood exactly what it meant to say someone is a Lord. They were in charge. Their word held sway over everything. Not the subject. Not me. To say Jesus is Lord is to say that God is in charge. To say Jesus is Lord is to say that I'm not the one determining the mission statement of my life. God's mission statement is the one who counts. To say Jesus is Lord is to say I'm not leader of the pack at all. Jesus is. It can be a little scary for those of us who are control freaks. But before we get too scared, there is a neat side to this as well. To say that Jesus is Lord is to say that I am no longer a lone ranger. God's presence is with me in Christ through the Holy Spirit. To say Jesus is Lord is to say that I don't have to be afraid, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, a spirit of fear. To say that Jesus is Lord is to say that I don't have to keep proving myself day in and day out because I'm not saved by my merits. I'm saved by the merits of Jesus. In fact, I'm part of a large, growing, extended family, a family that increases through adoption. That's important. We are increased through adoption. We're no, there are no biological Christians. I can't claim that because my parents were missionaries in Latin America that I am saved. Not at all. I, I love to say this. I know you've heard it said before. Being raised by Christian parents and going to the church all the time doesn't make me a Christian any more than living in a garage makes me a car. We are Christians if and only if we have surrendered our life to Jesus. We are Christians if and only if we understand that our mission as adopted children is to bring in new generation of siblings. Not through procreation, but through, if you will, adoration. By giving ourselves to Jesus. We may not be able to come with gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but there are many ways to come let us adore him. Indeed, there are as many ways to do that as there are children in our family. Some people sit sedately while they sing their hymns. Others stand up and dance around and shout. Does it make one better than the other? No. Just different. Sisters and brothers, that is adoration. That is epiphany. That is why we are here.
as we celebrate the new year beginning today, let us make adoration the biggest part of who we are. Let us, like the Magi, if not literally, at least figuratively, fall on our faces before Jesus and proclaim him as Lord, the one who is calling the shots. Don't need to have this raisin-shaped bump on your forehead, but we need it in our hearts, don't we? As we continually go as far as we can to worship Jesus, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Indeed, O oh, come, let us adore him. Amen and amen. Our hymn is number 234, O oh, Come All You Faithful. Would you stand as we sing together? Together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people of God, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Would the ushers come? stand as we sing together. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Words are on the screen. Continue now with our Holy Communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought, to us to, brought us to a new land that was our gift from you. You raised us up, making us a light to the nations, that through us they might behold your glory. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, have 
and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. So important was his birth to all creation that visitors came from afar bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, myrrh. You warned them to return home by another way that they and the child Jesus might be spared death. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We give you thanks, O Lord, for our union with Christ through the sacrament. May we live and move and have our being in him always and everywhere. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, has died. Christ, is, risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the, all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen, amen. Amen. body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This table of blessing is open to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a member here or not. Doesn't matter how old or how young you are. If you want to partake, the elements will be passed to you in the pew. Take a piece of bread, hold it until I instruct you to eat it, and then eat it. Uh, the cup will be passed, and you take that, hold it until I instruct you to drink it, and then you drink it. Doesn't mean you have to. No one will judge you if you don't want to partake. Just let the plate pass. But as always, we pray that you will share with us in the grace of God through Jesus Christ, would the ushers come?
the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of Jesus. The blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of you in remembrance of Jesus. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. We thank you further that you have filled us with an altogether uh, joy and peace and hope and love. May we go forth from this place, spreading the light of Jesus, even to the world. Amen. Our sending hymn is just a little chorus. We're going to sing the first verse only. Would you stand as we sing together, This Little Light of Mine. Now may the God who gave us this past year, the Savior who walked at our side each day, and the Spirit who filled us with life abundant, grace the coming year with peace and hope and joy and the love of Jesus Christ in whose name we say amen and amen.